Now let's start thinking about behavior management and this in the context of your team. Because the way that you train people in behavior management or really anything should depend on where they are professionally and their learning style and a lot of different pieces because each person is unique and different. So we're gonna look at this within the framework of situational leadership. Situational leadership brings up the point that there are that everybody's going to be in a different situation. And as you are leading people, as you're managing people, supervising them and training them, you should be aware of where they are on this curve. So the way that you train a new employee is going to be very different than the way that you lead an employee who has been with the program for years and really knows what they're doing and knows all the different tools. One thing to keep in mind about situational leadership is that people can start anywhere on the, um, in the matrix and sometimes people fall backwards. Uh, it could be because you know they're kind of burnt out. It might be because they have a particularly difficult group of kids that they're working with. It just depends. When we're thinking about situational leadership too, it's important to remember that people might be in the different areas depending on the specific piece. You might have somebody who, you know, they know how to manage a group and they're doing a great job and they're more in the participating section. But when it comes to building lesson plans or curriculum, they're really in that telling section because they don't have a good grasp of it. So it's important to remember that staff will be in different sections of this. Uh, it's very unlikely that you'll have everybody in one quadrant in one given time. Uh, it's important to remember that some people have different strengths and also important to remember that sometimes people can fall backwards. So with situational leadership, uh, we are being aware of where our staff are falling on this matrix on the quadrant and leading them with that information in mind. So when someone is in the first quadrant telling or directing, um, this is somebody who has pretty low competence, but they have high commitment. And so they're very excited to do the job, excited to be there, ready to get going, but they just don't have the skills. So during this time, they're going to require direct instructions. You need to be very clear with what they need to do and follow up regularly. So with behavior, this might be that you are taking time to say, when you have somebody who is refusing to listen, they're up running around in circles around the group that's sitting down to do a read aloud, you need to get down on their level look at them in the eyes and ask them to please stop and say, I need you to stop running right now because we all need to be sitting quietly so that everyone can hear the book. Do you think you can do that for me? And so being very clear about what they need to do. You should also be encouraging and motivational and um, give a lot of praise and correction. So when you're offering a suggestion for how they could change what they're doing, praise them as well. I see that you use that feedback sandwich that we talked about. So I see that you're doing a really great job getting the kids excited about this activity that they're about to do, but I see that you're not addressing the um, behavior problems that are going on. And when he was running around in circles around the group, they weren't able to hear the book because they were so distracted. So next time I need you to take a pause. I know that's difficult. Sit down and ask the child to sit down, sit down with the group and give them a clear redirection. When you move on to the coaching and selling section, that means that um, your employee has some competence and medium commitment, and you're going to still focus on tasks, but also develop a relationship with that employee. Developing relationships is important at all times, but it can become more of a focus once they've moved into this coaching section. You're going to spend a lot more time listening and offering advice and suggesting ideas rather than telling them. So it might be you know, I've noticed that when you're working on homework time, there's some kids who just keep fighting back about um, not wanting to do their reading for the full 20 minutes. So some ideas that I had you could do were you could put a timer up so that the kids have a visual representation of when they can be done with their reading time. Or uh, another idea I might ha I had was maybe we could do some kind of um, incentive system for the kids. Which one of those do you think would be better? And so you're allowing them to get a little more input, but really you're giving them pretty clear, concrete suggestions. 
Then we move into participating. Um, at this point, they're competent at the job, but a little inconsistent. So you're going to um, keep working with them to make sure that the work is done at the level it needs to be done. And um, you're gonna focus a lot on the relationship between the employee, the leader, and the team. So at this participating section, you're going to give them a lot more opportunity to contribute to um, the situation and what's going on. So it might be, you know, I've noticed in your uh, homework time that people are really fighting back against reading time, even though it is part of their homework every day from the school district. What, what are some ways that you think you could create a more successful environment for the kids. And so you're letting them be more participating um, in fixing problems and thinking through their position and their job and their responsibilities. You're gonna keep working with them because they're not going to be able to do this on their own. Um, and you're gonna come in with really good questions as you're having conversations with them. Then we move to delegating. When an employee's here, they feel, fully, they feel fully empowered and competent, and you're able to, able to delegate and observe with minimal follow-up. So you're gonna continue to praise them because everybody likes praise, but it's not needed on every task. So with delegating, you might say, you know, I've noticed that there have been some problems in your homework area right now along the uh, reading requirements. Can you come up with some ideas that would be good and um, try them out and get back to me? And so you're still giving them that direction that they need, still helping them out, still being a leader, supervisor, manager, but you know that they're competent, you know that they're empowered, and so you're giving them the opportunity to really take it on on their own. So situational leadership is great because you're able to really think about where is my employee right now? And so you're taking the time to think about their skills really concretely. What do I see them doing well? What do I see them doing not so well? And how can I best support them in building up those skills or maintaining those strengths that I see them doing a great job at? And how can I empower them to keep doing that? So I encourage you really to think about it in this format and maybe even take the time to, you know, draw it out, draw that small quadrant, and then place your staff in each section um, in regards to behavior management or whatever it might be. And just think about, am I leading this person in the way that will make them most successful? Another uh, management thought process is to use this will and skill matrix. So the will and skill is divided into quadrants again, and um, the idea being that on the um, one axis, the vertical axis, then we're thinking about they either have low will, not you know not very interested in um, what they're working on, or high will. And then on the horizontal axis, we have skill. So they either don't really have the skills or they do have the skills to do their job. And people can fall in all different piece, all different quadrants here. Um, again, they might move, right? Maybe their will changes. You're gonna hopefully see those skills build over time. And so there are ways to work with them and provide feedback that are best depending on which quadrant they're in. So we'll start off by looking at high will, low skill. If that's the case, you're going to work on guiding them. You're gonna be very clear about expected outcomes and discuss and set methods. So it's similar to situational leadership. You're being very clear about what needs to get done. You're gonna check for understanding. If somebody needs some extra support, you're gonna identify and provide training. And it's not going to be, oh, hey, if you're interested, why don't you check this out? But being very clear that in order to build up this skill, I need you to take this training on behavior. And you're gonna accept mistakes as important coaching moments. You're going to understand that while they have low skills, you're here to help them build it up. And you're going to really build up their confidence by giving them responsibility for tasks or responsibilities that they can do. Maybe you have a new employee who is struggling with behavior, but somehow when they are in, they are in the snack area, it goes so smoothly. And so you're going to give them responsibility for that frequently and then provide them praise for what they're doing well and being very specific about their doing well. If somebody's in this guide section, you're gonna to need to have a lot of check check-ins because they're just learning the different pieces of their job. 
And as always, you're going to praise and reward for success. That's on every slide you'll see because it's important. Everybody needs praise. So if we have somebody with high will and really high skill, then we're going to move to this delegate section where you're still being clear about expected outcomes, but you're going to involve them a lot in decision making and ask them for their opinions and give them a lot of responsibility as you can. It's important to still provide feedback. Um, a lot of this feedback might be great, but people can always grow in their position. So you can tell them, you know, I am amazed with how you've created such a culture of positive behavior here. I see you validating children's efforts and how they're doing well. It's so great. Um, I'd love to see how we can work more on focusing on stopping those big issues before they get into bigger issues. And so, um, you know, always look for that next piece that they can grow. And with this, again, praise and reward for their successes. If we have someone that is in low will and low skill, and you're going to keep them on, then you need to think about what would motivate the employee. And I always encourage you to even ask them, is it that they need motivation with tangible items? Is it that they need motivation with more professional development? What is it? Do they need more one-on-one -on -one time coaching with you? So figure out first what's going to motivate them. You're always going to be clear with um, what the expected goals are. You're going to be very clear with rules, methods, and deadlines. So this is very much that telling section. You'll be very clear about it all. And you can always structure tasks for quick wins. So it might be that you know they're really having a hard time with um, different pieces, but you know that um, if they can run a tag game for 10 minutes, those 10 minutes are great. It's once things kind of spiraling out of control after 10 minutes where it gets tough for them. So ask them to run tag for 10 minutes and then you're gonna step in. So give them that quick win. You're also gonna provide a lot of feedback and check-ins um, to make sure that they're doing well, but relax control as progress is shown because if they have low will, you wanna make sure they're not too overbearing. And as always, praise and reward for their successes. Then we have Excite. So at the Excite section, people have low will but really high skill. And so the focus you need to have is how to excite them and motivate them. So talk to them about why the task is important and why they are the best choice to do this task and really motivate them. Ask Again, ask them what would motivate them most because they have the skills, it's just that they're not very excited about the task. So you're going to give them motivation. You're gonna say, you know, it is so great how you are working with the kids on really expressing their feelings when they're upset. That is so important because that's really giving them skills for the long run. Labeling feelings is something some adults struggle with. So I am so glad that you're working on that with the kids. So you're praising and rewarding them for success. You're providing feedback and you're being clear about what you're hoping the outcome will be. So show them why it's important. Also give them responsibility for what you can because they're competent and they know what they're doing they have those skills so maybe they're looking for more responsibility and so give them that responsibility when you can and when they do that well make sure that you're always praising and giving feedback and uh, really rewarding their successes So I encourage you now to take some time and place your staff in these different areas and think about, as I'm placing them here, am I currently supporting them in the best way possible?